Good morning. What a blessing to be in the presence of God. What a blessing to have the opportunity to have a worship service where we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> we are blessed to be in, in the presence of God. And I really pray that each one of us <coughs> put themselves together and offer themselves this morning as a living sacrifice to worship, to pray, to listen to the Lord and to be in communion with God for His glory. I pray that you have had a wonderful week and I pray that you have all reasons to worship God this morning. You have all reasons to Call upon the name of the Lord. We have just started our fundraising for our building. So as we prepare ourselves and as we work together to build our building, we want to do it in the spirit of prayer, in the spirit of faithfulness, in the spirit of holiness in a spirit of sanctification, of integrity, of sacrifice, and of commitment. Let us pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name, we magnify your name. You are a wonderful God. You have given us life this morning. Therefore, you have given us hope. Hope to live. Hope to get better. Go, hope to see your greatness, your might, your light. Thank you, Father, for my brother and my sister and myself who have the opportunity to, be, to come into your presence this morning to bless your name, to worship you, God. I can only thank you for your faithfulness. I can only thank you for your greatness. I can only thank you, God, for you are almighty for us. You are all-powerful for us. You are, you, 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 you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the healer for us. You are the deliverer for us. Thank you for your sublime being. Thank you, Father, for you love us so much that you want to speak to us this morning. You love us so much that you give us an opportunity to worship you, an opportunity, God, to offer you a service of worship. And we want to come to you, God, in a spirit of sacrifice. Before we can offer you a, a service of worship, we want to offer ourselves to you. We want to give you our heart, our mind, and soul, and everything we are, God to worship you, to bless your name, to magnify your name, to serve you, God. Receive us, welcome us into your presence and sanctify us, God. Forgive our sins, forgive, God, our trespasses, for we have gone astray from your will. We have gone far away from your presence through disobedience and sin. I pray, God, that you will forgive us, forgive even our unbelief. There are circumstances where we have lost believing and faith. But I pray, God, that you forgive even our unbelief and welcome into your presence this morning. We come to you. We cry out to you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehovah, that your forgiveness is going to break down, to destroy stronghold. It's going to destroy things that were claiming us and restraining us from, from getting into your presence, from growing closer and closer to you, God. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that as you forgive us, Father, you are going to make a way for us to get to draw closer and closer to you in the name of Jesus. And God, that you are going to provide us with, hallelujah, power and anointing and authority to resist the devil, to resist the schemes of the devil in the name of Jesus God, that you are going to fill us with a spirit of wisdom, of love, hallelujah, hallelujah and self-control, reba shayama let the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit be our share God, so we can worship you in truth and spirit thank you Lord, 
Thank you, Jesus. Receive our worship as we admire, as we are in awe of who you are, of how sublime, how faithful you are, and how great you are. Excellency is the work of your hands. You are love. You are so mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are the light of our lives. And your word is a light unto our path. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For you are worthy. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy of our prayers. You are worthy of our cries. We long to be in your presence. We long to be with you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And thank you for everything today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for my brother, my sister, who is on the other side watching this, connected to us through a YouTube channel. We pray, God, that YouTube channel should not become a, bar a barrier. But God, that the anointing that we feel in this place will go through each and every single house, every single place. If somebody's in their car, let the anointing get to that car in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you, Father. I bless your name. I magnify you. I magnify your name, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God is and will always be the glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Yes, God, we praise your name this morning again. Yes, our God is a God of wonder and, and miracles. So with that in mind, we come before your presence, O Lord. Seeking after one more sign and one more miracle from you. Thank you, Jesus.
Like a work of promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are You are the way maker and savior Way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are Yes, we sing way maker and we shout yes Way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the way maker, oh yes. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Oh, yes, we sing that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, yes, that is who you are. That is who you are. Yes, we say that is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, yes, that is who you are. Waymaker say, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, Waymaker, yes, shout Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I wanna hear you shout it one more time and sing Waymaker say Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are Yes, we say that is who you are That is who you are Yeah, so that is who you are That is who you are Say that is who you are. That is who you are. Yes, we sing that is who you are. Oh, that, that is who you are. Oh, yes, oh God. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop, you never stop say Even when I don't see it, you working Even when I don't feel it, you working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Oh yes, even when I don't see it, you working Even when I don't feel it, you working You never stop, you never stop working you never stop, you never stop working. Even when, even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Yes. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Women, miracle worker, promise keeper, 
light in the darkness, my God, Thou is who You are. Yes, we sing, waymaker, say, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who You are. One more time, sing, waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. You sing, that is who you are. That is who you are. Yes, we sing, that is who you are. 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 Things. 
You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You do mighty things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. You sing, you do. Glorious things, you're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. One more time, say you do my things, you do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Awesome is your name, God. Thank you, Lord. You are awesome. You are sublime. Overwhelming. Beyond measure. Beyond understanding. Awesome is your name, God. Thank you. Lord, I pray that you bless us with your word. You bless my brother, my sister, and I with your word of wisdom, with your word of correction, with your word of guidance and direction, with your word of healing and revelation. To you, God is, and always be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, good morning once again. It's a blessing to be in God's presence. And I pray that you open up your heart to receive the word of God and the anointing that comes with it this morning. Because I strongly believe God is going to do something in your life through this word and this moment in it that we spend in his presence. Hallelujah. See, I, I talked about in the past two weeks, I talked about the pain of waiting, don't rush. And as you wait upon the promises of God, 
what could be true help for you. And help sometimes, help is when people lead you to the Lord, lead you to have a personal relationship with God. Because we can only help you, but you need to get to that point when you have a relationship with God. And t- today, I want to talk about an altar of prayer. And I really want you to listen. An altar of prayer. And we are going to understand in the spiritual realm, what is an altar? And from there, we are going to move on to, to understanding what does it mean for a human being to become an altar themselves of prayer? And what does that even do, you know? Uh, so I really pray that you pay attention. An altar of prayer. Let me read in Genesis chapter 4. I'll probably start at verse 3. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel, for, for, for his part, brought of the first, the firstlings of his flock their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, uh, for Abel and his offering, sorry, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his uh, uh, countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your uh, countenance fallen? If you, do, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is uh, lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must, ma- you must master it. Then said to his brother Abel, let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. An altar of prayer. So before we actually understand an altar of prayer, we need to understand an altar first. What is an altar? We need to understand that we have two dimensions here. We have what we call the physical world, the world we live in, and there is also what we call the spiritual world, the spiritual realm. Now, nobody in the spiritual realm, nobody, it's quite interesting, nobody in the spiritual realm can actually impact the physical world except if they get permission. And it's amazing how God created things that even God Even God, who is a sovereign God, he cannot really impact your life until you give God authorization. Until you allow God to do so. See, you have no idea how much God wants to save you. (laughs) He can just save you against your will. He has the power to do so. But in the principles of God, he still needs your permission to do so. Because God is spirit, and what is in the spiritual realm does not easily translate into the physical world just because they want to. They need a system of authorization. They need permission, and that's what an altar is. See, Adam used to talk to God like easily, but after sin... He probably learned that you don't get to God that easily anymore. So he taught his children how to get into the presence of God. How to invoke the presence of God. And they built an altar of sacrifice. 
Because that's the way to get to God. And, and, and during that time, if you did wrong, you got the answer right away that this was not well done. And this was well done. It's not like today. We don't even know most of the time if we did well or not. But an altar is a system of authorization which begins to connect the spiritual to the physical. That's an altar. In African traditional religions, even then, our forefathers, our ancestors in Africa, they did not get to God directly. They had to do some stuff, to do some rituals, to get in contact with spirits. Because it's not a world that you just go in and out, you know. There is to be, there's a system of authorization. You don't just get the authority to get into the spiritual world. Or any spiritual being does not just have the authority to come into the physical world and do what they want. They need some form of authorization. They need some form of permission that allows them to go from one world to another. Mm. Now, by this you understand that there's a lot of different types of altars. It could be altars of prayer. There could be altars of bad stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there later. You can build an altar of evil things in your house. Remember, when God called Gideon, what did he have to do? He had to destroy the altar of Baal in his father's house. So there could be different types of altars. But an altar is a system of authorization created by God himself. Even for God to save humanity. He did not just come and save. Listen, Jesus has to take flesh. He had to translate into a physical being. And that physical Jesus, that human Jesus, had to cry in the garden of Gethsemane and say, Father, get this away from me, but I give you authorization to do your will. That prayer was not just prayer because Jesus was in anguish. Just not because he was frustrated. Not just because it was, it was an agonizing experience to see how he was going to die. But it was also there that Jesus was like, you have now the authorization to do to this flesh what you want. That's an altar. It was an altar right there at Gethsemane. A place where there is this, you know, in, in John chapter 1, Jesus says, you will see angels of God coming and descending on the Son of Man. It's a place where things begin. You begin to connect this connection uh, between the physical world and the spiritual world. Uh, and something spiritual, some spiritual activities are happening uh, in a physical world. Uh, that's an altar. That's why Elijah knew that I want fire from heaven. Uh, I want something spiritual to manifest into my physical world. What do I do? I build an altar of sacrifice. An altar so that fire can come down and a physical world can see it. Hallelujah. But to, this morning I want to talk about an altar of prayer. And I'm going to get there slowly. Now an altar could be a monument. Something some people build physically. Throughout the Old Testament, we see all those kind of altars. 
They, they built an altar. Every time Abraham, God would do something for Abraham, he would build an altar. You know? Every time. The church, the temple, the monument could be an altar. But an altar could also be a place, a certain place. Hallelujah. A certain place where some activities are happening. Some spiritual activities happen. You know, Abraham, the Bible says when God gave him Canaan, the first thing he did, he began to build altars. He built one in this little region. He built one in Bethel. Generations later, if you read in Genesis chapter 12, verse 8, I think the Bible talks about Abraham building an altar. And if you go into 13, chapter 4, I believe, he builds an altar, an altar in Bethel. This is Jacob. And I want you to understand. This is Jacob, who is a grandson of Abraham, right? Son of Isaac. He is going, he got somewhere, he gets tired. And he's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to sleep here in this place. A place where his grandfather Abraham built an altar. <laughs> Jacob did not pray. He did not say, God, visit me. But that night, he saw angels coming down and up. See, people of God, that's why there are places in this world. Uh, you go at some places. Uh, you, you're like, oh my God, I just went there and I came out. Even my disease is gone. Uh, I'm just feeling good. Uh, because in that place, uh, there is some activities happening. Uh, it's an altar where something is happening. Uh, connecting the physical uh, to the spiritual. Uh, an altar connects you who is physical to the spiritual spiritual uh, who is God and maybe other spiritual beings. Yes, Lord. Abraham built an altar and Jacob just find himself uh, in that area. He just went to bed to sleep, uh, but something is happening. Uh, it's not a place like any other place. Uh, it's a place where there is partnership uh, with God uh, and there is partnership between the physical uh, and the spiritual uh, and he did not even ask God oh I want to have a nice dream uh, but because in that place uh, there's something happening uh, he had an experience with God an altar could be a monument an altar could be a place area the first thing he did Abraham when God gave him Robert Shayama Canaan he built an altar he built a place where God is definitely going to come down and do wonders what did you do first when God gave you your house What did you do first when God gave you your marriage? Did you build an altar of prayer or not? Abraham built an altar. And generations later, Jacob is just benefiting. Uh, is, and he's like, he doesn't understand what's going on. Uh, and then the Bible says, God said, I am God, uh, the God of Abraham. Mm. What we are doing today is going to benefit our children tomorrow. We need to build altars. Uh, we need to create, we need to build altars where we allow God uh, in the spiritual uh, to come.
come into the physical uh, and impact the physical world uh, we live in to impact our physical lives. Uh. Oh, God reminded me of so many things. You know when? Well, let me go to the people. People first. An altar could also be a human being. Listen, because Abel built an altar, he prayed to God, and then his brother Cain killed him. <laughs> Cain killed Abel, forgetting that there was already a connection. God is saying, where is your brother Abel? And Cain is like, am I my brother's keeper? I don't know. And God said, don't lie to me, because his blood is talking to me here. Hallelujah. His blood is talking to me. Because he was connected to God. When you are connected to God, when you are in that system of authorization, even your enemies, when they come to attack you, they find that there's spiritual activities going into your life. They find that this angel coming down and up into your life upon you. Your enemy do not know what to do because they find that there's already a different type of altar. It's a different system of authorization. But this time where a human being becomes a living altar, I'm going to get to that at the end. How do you build an altar? Repetition and consistency. That's how you build an altar. Listen. If you test drugs today, that's how they get a lot of young people. Can you test this? When you do it for the first time, you are not addicted. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. There is consistency. What you do not know is that you are building an altar. It means uh, you are giving authorization uh, to all the spirits behind drugs. Uh. When there's consistency in the spiritual realm, they're like, oh my God, uh, somebody is calling for me. Somebody needs me. Somebody needs my services. Uh. You begin to build an altar. By the time you know it, uh, those spirits behind that activities uh, are all all over you. They now have authority over you. It becomes an addiction. You don't know how to get out of it anymore. It's an altar you have built. You have already given permission to the spirit behind that activity to come over your life. The same way, if I pray today, Reba Shedema, and then I pray again, and then I pray again, and then I pray again. Uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is like somebody's calling for me. Listen. Consistency. That's how you build an altar. If you pray every day, if you pray every day in that place, oh yabako shayaba. What you don't understand, you are becoming a living altar yourself, but that place is also becoming an altar. Reke shedema in gloria. That's why you get in some places and you feel like praying. Huh? Because there's some spiritual activities taking place. And when you become a living, uh, a living altar yourself, uh, there's some activities happening in your life every moment. Uh, even your silence is prayer. Even just your presence becomes prayer. 
That's why you go somewhere in a house uh, and evil spirit begins to run. Uh, you did not even say a word of prayer. You know, Elisha was dead. But then a soldier who is killed at war is thrown into the pit where they put Elijah's body. His body was rotten. It only remained, there was just bones of Elijah. But that man touched a bone of a dead person because Elijah was a living altar. Wherever Elijah was, there was some spiritual activities happening. He touched a bone and the soldier is rose from the dead. An altar is a system of authorization. Uh, you give God the authority to come into your life uh, and to take over your life. Uh, when you do something consistently, you are calling upon a spirit. Uh, my prayer is that uh, you do something that is going to call the Holy Spirit. Uh, people have got evil spirit in their homes uh, by consistently doing some things. Uh, because then in the spiritual world, uh, somebody's like, somebody's calling for me. Somebody's giving me the authority. Thank you, Lord. That's why sometimes uh, you move into a house uh, and you are like, I don't understand. Uh, before we moved to this house, uh, my marriage was stable. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, suddenly, I have become uh, abusive. Uh, who was living there before? Uh, maybe they just created, uh, they built an altar of domestic violence uh, and when you come uh, you have no idea that that place uh, is a place to which they have given authority to those kind of spiritual activities but we want to be like Abraham we want to build an altar where people where people will encounter Jesus Christ say about Shayama Listen, sanctification ministry. When you pray in the morning every day, when you pray at night, uh, when you pray every day, uh, your children are looking at you. What you don't realize, uh, you are building an altar of prayer. You are building an altar of prayer. When Jesus got into the temple, uh, let, let, let me say this to you. An altar of, of prayer is the hardest thing to do as a Christian. Listen, it's easy for so many people to preach. It's easy for so many people to sing. It's easy for so many people to do a lot of things in church. But it's very difficult for so many people to pray. Because prayer requires sacrifice. Not prayer before eating. I'm talking about a prayer that builds an altar of prayer. That's why you can preach, you can sing, you can do some services in church, uh, but those activities uh, will not give life. Uh, because if you want what you do to give life, uh, you need to go get life from the master of life, for the giver of life. Uh, and that is a spiritual activity. And you only get that authorization through an altar. You know, there was a young man named Angel. I don't think I will ever forget that in my life. When I was in Lubumbashi, I used to pray every day. Every night. I was outside of the house praying to God every night. Every night. Little did I know I was building an altar of prayer. Hallelujah. There was a young man called Angel who would come to visit me at that house. 
I didn't know, I didn't know at that time that when people came into that house, uh, they were like going through the altar and some spiritual activities were happening in their lives. Uh. And so one morning he came uh, very, very scared. He said to me, I had a dream last night. And in my dream, uh, there were evil spirits pursuing me. They were all after me. They wanted to destroy my life. And I ran and I ran and I ran. Listen, people of God. And then in my dream, I saw you. And I went close to you. And all of those evil spirits stood far away. And they were looking. So that's why when I woke up this morning, I decided to come to you. I want to be like you. I want those evil spirits to fear me. And I was like, that's a long process. But come on in. He began to, I said, but what do you think they were after you? People of God, he began to confess. He laid down his entire life before me that day. He told me everything he did wrong. From 8 in the morning up to 11 a.m. Three hours. He was just talking. And telling me how many bad things he did. And he had done in his life. He came to a place where something was happening in him. You know, sometimes people don't want to share some stuff. But it got into a place where there was already some spiritual activities uh, happening. Uh, he opened up and he told me so many things. We went together on that altar. I said, let us go on our knees. Uh, last night, I was praying right here. Let's kneel here and talk to God uh, to forgive you and to deliver you. We prayed. Uh, he repented. He cried. Uh, he gave his life to Christ that day. Uh, and let, let me say this to you. By 2 p.m., uh, we separated him and me. Uh, I said, go in peace now uh, and let the power of God go with you. By 4 p.m. that day, uh, I received a phone call. That young man passed away. Uh, he passed away right after the altar experience with Christ. Uh, Build an altar because somebody could be saved one day. Somebody will pass by your house and they get saved because there are some spiritual activities uh, happening in your house. Consistency. Pray. Pray again. Pray again. By the time you know, a spirit of prayer will say, somebody's calling me. By the time you know, you cannot stop praying anymore. By the time you know, you cannot stop praying anymore. Jesus says, it doesn't say my house will be a house of preaching. It doesn't say my house will be a house of offering. It says my house will be a house of prayer. Do you know why? Because you can preach and not pray. You can offer and not pray. But you cannot pray and not receive the word. There's no way somebody who prays to God every day cannot, can reject the word of God. A prayer is an altar that allows you and God to be in partnership. What is even more intriguing uh, is that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. But the Bible says he continues uh, to intercede. Hallelujah. Why would Jesus need prayer when he's sitting next to the Father? Because that's the only way to allow the spiritual to break through into the physical and to impact the physical. An altar of prayer. You might be waiting for God's promises in your life, but how are you waiting? You need to wait in prayer because when you pray, you are building an altar of prayer. Gideon could not serve God uh, with an altar of Baal. He needs to destroy it. 
That's why people of God, uh, we don't pray one day and everything in your life is solved. Uh, no. Because there are things that you built in your life through consistency. It's not a one day prayer. You need to pray. You know, you cannot destroy some evil spirit in your life. You cannot destroy the authority of some evil spirit in your life because there is an altar of authorization of those spirits. The only way you can destroy those altars is by building a new one. An altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you don't pray one day and think everything is done. You continue to pray. You pray consistently until your prayer life becomes an altar where there's no, there's no moment where there's no spiritual activities. An altar of prayer. And an altar of prayer can become a human being. It's when prayer and you become one. Paul didn't need to say a lot. He would just touch his shadow and people get healed because he was a living altar moving altar it's just that wherever Paul was there was a spiritual activity taking place uh, the power of the anointing uh, when you pray consistently you, you, you are calling upon the anointing of God when you pray consistently you are calling the communion with God uh, prayer allows you to be in communion uh, with God uh, hallelujah and and you authorize the, the, the living spirit to come in you, but what you don't also know is that the living spirit also gives you the authority. Hallelujah. The authorization. That's how you become powerful. Through prayer. Through prayer. Through prayer. Sanctification ministry, we are going to build a temple for our Lord. And more importantly, we are going to build a house of prayer. Hallelujah. A house of prayer. That's why giving an offering is not enough. You give an offering, but you also give prayer. You pray consistently. We are building an altar of prayer. Listen, King Solomon built the most important temple. I can, I can imagine. Uh, but there was no glory of God until uh, the Bible said he built an altar. Made a sacrifice. And then he prayed. Then the glory of God uh, came down to the temple. The glory of God can come down into your marriage. The glory of God can come down into your house. The glory of God can come down into your car if your car has become an altar of prayer. Altar of prayer. A house will be called a house prayer. When a church does not pray, even the word is not living. Nothing lives. Everything is dead. Because there's no life from the spiritual to the physical. It needs an altar to do that. In our salvation, the altar was Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why today, because it, 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 it's a system of authorization. Uh, that's why today it doesn't matter. Even, even a witch or a sorcerer. If they just say, in the name of Jesus, uh, something happens. Uh, because uh, it, there is an altar, a system uh, of authorization. If you cry out to the Lord, and I'm going to continue to talk about it. And I'll show it. How Jesus <laughs> is the altar of our salvation. It's a principle of God. If you do something consistently, you are building an altar. Those who give offerings consistently, they are building an altar of offering. Those who love people, 
consistently, they are being your altar of love. But I'm talking about an altar of prayer because that's the only altar that gives life to any, any other altar. Life comes from God and you can only grasp it through an altar and your faith. And your faith. What have you done consistently? Whether it's a sin, that's why you cannot control that sin because it's no longer just you. You've already given authority to the evil spirit behind that sin. It becomes an obsession, an addiction. For you to destroy that, you need to build a different type of altar. An altar of prayer. Pray, and then pray again, and pray again, and pray again, and pray again. By the time you know it, prayer becomes part of your life. You become a living altar of prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Double check your life. Which kind of altars have you built? But there's one you need tonight, this morning. An altar of prayer. I'm so used to tonight prayers that I'm thinking tonight. No, you need to pray to build an altar of prayer. Of prayer. I remember when I was in Lubumbashi again, there was this witch doctor. Somebody gave him my clothes. He wanted to bewitch me. He couldn't. So he came to that house. He knocked at the gate. I went to open. The Lord said, you should be the one opening that gate. When I came out, I saw a man wearing my clothes. <laughs> and I said, are you the witch doctor? He was shivering. I said, come in into the house. He could not. He could not because uh, that house had become an altar of prayer. Had become a place where God comes down. Uh. You know, Jacob called that place uh, the gate of heaven. Hmm. This is the place where you see people going to heaven and coming down. With some spiritual activities happening. Hallelujah. 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 If you become a living altar, you just go somewhere. You won't say a word. But spiritual activities will be happening. People in this country, they call it a presence. They tell you, you just, you have such a presence. No, let's call it for what it is. Uh, you have the anointing uh, of the Holy Spirit. You have the presence of God uh, wherever you go because you have become an altar. An altar of prayer. An altar of prayer. I cannot say everything the Lord gave me today. But I hope that you understand that you have an altar to build. It's an altar of prayer. Prayer. I'm going to finish by this testimony. Everybody knows the evangelist Billy Graham. A man that has touched millions and millions of hearts. But you may also know John Wesley. John Wesley in, in, in 1700 was a man of God. He is, he is the, he's like the father of all Wesleyan uh, churches. All Wesleyan churches. The Wesleyan Church, the uh, United Methodist Church, the Methodist Church of England, all of those are branches of one father, John Wesley. Now, John Wesley, if you go to England, they might, some people visit his house, right? And in his bedroom, I believe, he had a, a chair by the window. And he used to pray every day to God. I'm not sure. We need to read the book maybe twice or three times a day. I don't know. But it was a spiritual discipline for John Wesley. 
He prayed every day. He built an altar of prayer in that room. Now, the man called Billy Graham, when he was still a student, went to England with a, a, a thing, I believe, with his class or a group of people. I'm not sure. But when he got there, and uh, you, you know, like the, the, they were showing them, you know, oh, this is John Wesley's house. He used to live here. This was his bedroom. On this chair, he used to pray every day. Now, at the end of their tour, the tour master began to count his people. There was one person missing from the group. And when they were, they were talking about, where, where, where's Billy Graham? They were looking for him all over the place. They went to find him in John Wesley's room on that chair, praying to God. He was on that altar, hallelujah, communicating with heaven. He came from that place, an amazing evangelist. This is something that happened in 1700s, but somebody in the 1900s, 200 years later, can still receive the power of an altar of prayer. Fifty years from now, a hundred years from now, somebody's going to move into your house. And praise God, somebody's going to get into that room uh, where you pray every day. And something is going to happen. It's an altar of prayer. My nephew came to pick me up in 2010. I had come to America late August. It was the 23rd of August 2010 that I came to America. A month later, I believe, almost a month later, my nephew came to pick me up from New Jersey to bring me to Baltimore. And we, as we were driving, listen, people of God, we, we went through this place. I don't, I, I, I don't know where. He, he would know better. Because he knew Baltimore before me. But we passed through this place. And I said to him, this place is a terrible place. I can see some evil spirit. I can feel something really bad. He said, how did you know? This is the place where so many bad things happen. You know, if, if, if you kill somebody somewhere, and then they kill another person, and then they kill another person, you don't need to call spirits. You have already invited them. Because you have built an altar of death in that place. Consistency. That's how you build an altar. You pray. You pray again. And you pray again. And that place becomes a place of visitation of God. An altar of prayer. I can go on and on. Build an altar of prayer. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 People of God, this is the time to give back to the Lord, so please send your offering or tithe via Cash App, PayPal, or Zelle. Second Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work.
Make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer, Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer, oh yes, Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer. A house of praise. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. May the fire on my altar never burn out. Make me a house of praise. Say, Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Yes, Lord. Make me a house. Make me. Make me a house of prayer. Yes, a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Yes, Lord, make me. in this world call it pardon if you see the same evil things happening to different generations in your family you may want to wonder is there an altar that was built by somebody the evil altar that allows evil spirit to come and have some spiritual activities in your family, some spiritual activities in your house. You know, here in America, people say, I, I moved into a house that is haunted. It's full of evil spirit. How do they get there? Because somebody built an altar that gives them authorization to come and overtake the house. But I pray that you will build an altar that will call the Holy Spirit to come and fill your life 
and take over your life and take over your house and take over your marriage and take over your family. Reba Shayama, an altar of prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, because you have called us to communion with you, to be in a covenant, to be in partnership with you. As you continue to use us, as you continue to bless us as your children. Thank you, God, for reminding us that we are called to build an altar of prayer. For your house will be called a house of prayer. The Bible says in the book of James that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful. Prayer is powerful. And when we build an altar of prayer, you do something every time we call upon your name because it allows, it, it authorizes for spiritual activities to happen and translate into the physical. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. We pray for next week. God be with us as next week starts tomorrow. Bless your people, your children going back to school, students writing papers and midterms. Lord, I pray that your holy presence will provide peace for them. Hallelujah. And health so they can study, so they can prepare for their uh, midterms and exams and, 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 and schoolwork in Jesus' name. I pray that you are going to create an environment where there's peace around them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We call upon your divine activities. We call upon your divine presence uh, in our homes, in our lives, uh, in our marriages, in our studies. Uh. Lord, I pray uh, that everywhere your children will be, let, it, let there be an altar of prayer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.